Hey everyone, my name is Paul, and today I'm installing sound deadening insulation in my RAV4. The first generation RAV4 is based on the chassis of a Corolla with all-wheel drive from a Celica. Because the platform is from a small economy car, the ride quality isn't great and it's noisy on the road. Let's go for a drive and I'll show you. I'm going 70 miles an hour right now and it's very loud in here. I'm speaking at a normal volume level and I'm sure you can hear me, but if you were sitting in the back seat, I would have to speak much louder. Installing sound deadening insulation is a big project. I'll break it down into sections, starting with the front doors. The door handle trim has one screw. Gently pry near the lock and pull it to the back of the car. The window crank clip can be taken out with a small hook. Put it back on the crank so you don't lose it. The big door handle has two screws. The front speakers will need to come out to get the door panel off. This speaker is upside down because I wanted the connector to be in front of the window track. My speaker box has three more screws, then I can take two screws out of the lower storage bin. Now just pry the panel out to release the trim clips. Next, pull the door panel straight up to remove it. I'm taking off the plastic liner. This keeps water from getting on the cardboard door panel. I want to get this extra adhesive off. Goo Gone with a scraper works really well for that. There's a little bit of plastic that folded over near the handle that I want to take out. This will make my life easier when I put the door panel back on. The door needs to be clean so the insulation will stick. I'm starting with a bathroom cleaner spray and wiping with a wet towel. I'm rinsing the door with clean water, then wiping again. Compressed air will get any extra water out. Next, I'm wiping the surface with alcohol. I'm taking the mirrors off because I want to replace the outside window trim. Release the clips, then pull the trim straight up. This part has a rubber wiper on it that prevents water from getting inside the door. The new trim just clips into place. I'm reinstalling the mirror now. Now it's time for some insulation. Place the sheet where you want it, then mark where you'll need to cut. Pull the backing part way off, then push the insulation onto the panel. Doing a little bit at a time will prevent air bubbles behind the insulation. Air bubbles leave gaps between the metal and insulation. If water gets in there, you'll have rust. Notice I cut square holes around the trim clips that hold the outside plastic cladding. If water leaks in through the clips, I don't want it to get behind the insulation. It's cold in my garage, so I'm heating up the insulation to help it stick. If you're working in the summer, you can skip this step. Next, use the roller to press the insulation down. Pop any air bubbles with a knife or screwdriver because they leave room for water and rust. I'm also applying insulation to the door panel. This panel is made out of crappy cardboard material. With the insulation on it, I won't need the plastic sheet on the door. The heat gun is next followed by the roller. You want to smooth out most of the diamonds. The door panel is much heavier now. I'm sure it will do a great job blocking noise. Snap all the edges down, then put the screws in. My speaker box has three screws. Time to put the speaker back in. Remember the two Phillips head screws for the storage bin. The big door handle takes two screws. All old RAV4 door handle trim pieces are broken, including mine and the ones at the junkyard. I bought new parts from Toyota. Don't forget about the front screw and cover, then the mirror trim. And finally the window crank. And the doors are done. The door sounds more solid now when I close it. The front doors took a very long time. I split them up and did them on different days. We're on to day three now and it's time for the rear door. The door trim has these Phillips head clips. They take quarter turn, then pull out. With the clips out, pull the lower trim off the door. The upper piece just pulls straight out. This door also has a plastic liner, but it doesn't need it. The rear window is sealed and the door panel is not made of cardboard. I'm getting the wiring out of the way so I can add insulation to the exterior sheet metal. Start with the backing partly pulled off and gradually press the insulation against the metal. Remember, air bubbles leave space for water and rust. Smaller pieces are easier to work with. It doesn't matter how many times you have to cut the insulation. I'm leaving cutouts for every clip that goes through the metal because I don't want water to get behind the insulation. Okay, a couple more pieces down low, then it's time for the heat gun. The temperature in my garage is 55 degrees Fahrenheit. That's too cold, so I have to heat up the insulation. You can skip the heat gun on a hot day. Use the roller to make sure the insulation is flat against the metal. 
Now I can reinstall the wiring and connect the rear windshield washer hose. The other side gets a bit more insulation and I covered the inner metal panel as well. I did not add insulation to the plastic panel. This door also sounds more solid than before. Now on to the rear side panels. I did these on day four and five. First, the back seats needed to come out. There are four bolts holding the seats down. Use a 14 millimeter socket to remove them. Now I can just pull the latch at the back of the seats and take them out. Open the seat belt cover, then take the bolt out using a 14 millimeter socket. The rear seat belt is next. Don't forget about the lower seat belt bolt. Remove the push pin by pushing it in a few millimeters with a small screwdriver. Take out the Phillips screws along the edge of the panels, then the storage compartment cover. The front lower door sill trim pulls straight up. The lower panel comes out at the back, then slide it forward to unhook it from the door jamb. The upper panel has three hidden push pins, then the whole panel pulls straight out. The storage compartments take a Phillips screwdriver and a 10 millimeter socket. I'm taking the speakers out next. I want to add some insulation behind them. There's a lot of dirt back here, so I'm starting with a rinse and a towel. Then bathroom cleaner and a towel. Then another rinse and a towel. This is why insulation takes such a long time. Compressed air will get rid of any water hiding behind things. And finally, I can clean the surface with alcohol. I'm installing the first piece of insulation on the outer sheet metal behind the speaker. I'll put a little strip here, then move on to the lower section. Remember to pull the backing part way off and gradually push the insulation on so you don't get air bubbles behind it. I cut a lot of small pieces around the weird shape of the fender well. The next step is the heat gun, then the roller. None of this is hard, it's just tedious. Okay, time to reinstall the speakers. And that's it! The entire outer sheet metal and fender well is covered with insulation. I got the other side done too. That took a very long time. Let's do a sound test on the rear panel. It's the sixth day of this project now and I'm starting on the floor. I'm hoping this will be easier than the sides, but knowing my luck, it will be much worse. Take the rear carpet out, then slide the seats forward. Use a 14 millimeter socket to remove the two bolts behind the seat. Then slide the seat back and take out the two bolts in front. Leave the seat back in the upright position and take the seat out of the car. The driver's seat is the same, but it has a connector for the seat belt warning light. The center console is next. It has two screws on each side. There's a Phillips head clip by the gas pedal. It's the same clip as the rear door panel. There's one more screw in the cup holder. You'll also need to unscrew the shift knob. I added a USB charger to my center console, so I'll need to unplug my wiring from the cigarette lighter. Watch episode 19 if you want to know more about the USB charger. Now the center console can come out. The front kick panel has a plastic nut, then just pull it straight back. Pull the carpet straight up on both sides to unclip it from the door jamb. Then it's ready to come out. The RAV4 already has sound deadening insulation. How nice of Toyota to include that. It's old and brittle, so I can chip it off with a hammer and chisel. I'm using Goo Gone and a brush to get rid of the old adhesive on the floor. Now I can just wipe it up with a paper towel. That looks better already. You know the drill by now. Bathroom cleaner towel, water, towel, alcohol. This metal plug goes under the insulation, so it must be sealed with silicone. Now I'm adding insulation to the floor in the back. Then I'm using the heat gun and roller. My car is much louder when the rear seats are out, so I'll add a second layer back here. These plastic pieces are heater ducts for the back seat passengers. Notice how the old insulation is coming off in big pieces. It doesn't stick to the metal very well. This is a problem because water can get under it and cause the floor to rust out. This plug is not sealed and goes to the inside of the frame channel. I'm using a sandpaper wheel to smooth out the sealant back here. I need a flat surface for the new insulation. Up front, Toyota used two layers of insulation. They knew the RAV4 was going to be a noisy piece of shit. This piece wasn't stuck to the metal either. This part took forever. Here's another big hole that isn't sealed. If any water gets in here, it can sit under the insulation and make the floor rust out. There is some evidence of water under the insulation and the metal plugs have rust under them. I'm using a wire wheel to clean up the rust. I'm lucky the previous owner didn't drive through puddles more. 
It's time for the goo gone and a brush. Then wipe up all the old nastiness. And let's do some more cleaning. If you've been watching this whole time, thank you for not falling asleep. I'm spraying fluid film inside the frame of the car to prevent any new rust from forming. The rubber plugs just go to the outside. Finally, I can clean the floor with alcohol. I scratched the floor a bit with my chisel and I used a wire wheel on the rust, so I'll need to paint the floor. These old metal plugs don't fit very well and aren't sealed. I designed some new floor plugs on the computer, then 3D printed them out of PETG plastic. The RAV4 has a surprising number of holes in the floor, so this is the set of plugs I made. You can download the STL files by clicking on the link in the video description, and you can 3D print them yourself. I'm installing the plugs with silicone sealer to keep water out of the car. Most of these holes go inside the frame, so you could hide your drugs in there. However, if your drugs moved around a bit, you might not be able to get them back out. I kept two stock rubber plugs on each side so I can have floor drains if I decide to wash the interior with a hose. This floor has a total of 24 plugs, including the ones I made, and 6 rubber plugs from Toyota. By now, you know what installing insulation looks like, so I'll spare you the details. I installed two layers on the entire front floorboard. The floor is done, and at this point I would say it's day 6 or something like that, but the truth is my RAV4 has been sitting in pieces in the garage for 3 weeks now. Let's finish the roof. The rear trim has 4 clips and comes off when you pull straight down. The A-pillar trim also unclips towards the middle of the car, then pull it up to unhook it. The visors have two screws, then you have to pull hard to get them out. The visor holder also snaps into place. Pull the mirror trim outward with a small hook to get it off. The mirror is attached to the roof, not the windshield. I like that. Fun fact, the front dome light works only with the front doors, and the dome light in the middle of the car only works when the back door is open. That is weird. The oh shit handles need to come off next. The driver doesn't need one because he's the one causing the oh shit situation and can hang on to the steering wheel. The headliner is this lightweight foam material. It's pretty awesome. Finally, I caught a break. I can skip all the crazy cleaning and just wipe the roof with alcohol. I installed one layer of insulation on the whole roof. The headliner is held in place at first by the oh shit handle mounts. It just stays up there. I'm just going to fast forward through the rest here. After 12 and a half minutes of watching me install sound deadening insulation, you're either asleep or taking that insulation back out of your Amazon shopping cart because it's too much work. You can definitely take some shortcuts to make the job faster. Insulating the front door panels was easy and I could have skipped the exterior sheet metal. I was concerned about rust under the floor insulation, but there was almost none. I could have just added insulation instead of replacing it. I'm also not sure if insulating the roof does anything. I'm sure most of the noise comes from the floor and sides. I replaced a lot of the trim clips along the way because I don't want the panels to be loose and the parts don't cost very much. Let's finish up the back of the car and move on to the front. Don't forget the floor vents and the carpet can go back in. You can vacuum it or even wash it before you put it back in the car. The kick panels slide forward and are held in place by a plastic nut. The center console has five screws holding it. Mine is extra fancy with a USB charger for my imaginary backseat friends, so I'll be sure to plug that back in. I love this view of the RAV4. It's so clean and open. Okay, the front seats go back in, then the rear carpet. They use these plastic clips so you can put a round screw into a square hole. I guess it makes sense? They work pretty well if you get new ones. Now I'm installing the back seat, and that's it. That's not a fake smile, folks. I'm glad to be done with this. Okay, time for a test drive to see if this car is better. This car makes a lot less noise with the insulation installed. I'll stop talking now so you can listen to the difference before and after. I'm going 70 miles an hour right now, and it's very loud in here. This car makes a lot less noise with the insulation installed. Installing sound deadening insulation is not hard or expensive, but it takes a ton of time. I work two jobs in order to be able to afford all this shit, so the unfortunate side effect is I don't have much free time. This project took me a month to complete. That's all I have for now, and I'll see you guys in the next video.